Hey all you cool cats and kittens, Michael here. Uh, today we're going to go over crashes in iOS. So I'm just going to go over, you know, like what to look for when a crash happens. You know, what the different screens are, um, what, you know, what you can check uh, to diagnose a crash. And, you know, 90% of the time, this will solve your problem for you. This, this will help you out. Um, there's a little more, there's some stuff, you know, you go into detail with stuff like multi-threading tasks. Uh, that'll be a different video. Uh, this one, we're just going to go over what happens when Xcode crashes. So um, here you'll see I have a string in the crash app, the crash app here. <laughs> I, have a, I have a string that uh, is an optional and I'm printing the count of uh, characters in that string and um, it's throwing an error. And as you guessed, if you're familiar with um, iOS development, this is an optional, and I am force unwrapping this optional before initializing it. So that is what this crash is about. Um, but just, just so, you know, just as an example, let's, let's check out uh, what's going on in Xcode. So this is thread one or the main thread uh, it will show, it will highlight this little chevron here, will point to the method that it, um, whatever, wherever it screwed up, the, uh, the line you can get from the backtrace we'll talk about in a second. And these threads are uh, numbered from, so it's like sorted to earliest. So uh, 38 right here, that was the first thing that happened. And then it goes all the way down through main, UI application main, going through like your app delegate, and then it calls this view did load. So um, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I feel like zero would be where it, where it starts, uh, just like where I would think it would start. But uh, yeah, I was about a year and a half into iOS development before I figured that out. Uh, <laughs> So what's over here is called the debug navigator, and it'll tell you how much memory you have. This is running in a simulator, by the way, but it'll tell you all this stuff for your device as well. Um, how much disk space you're using, um, the network connection and speed that's going at, CPU space, stuff like that. Um, and you have a bunch of other threads right here. So if you have something like a multi-threading issue, um, if, if what we're doing right now doesn't solve your problem, open these up and check them out. Uh, this work queue kern return, I can tell you, is something you don't have to worry about. Uh, Apple developers have said this is like, it's kind of a placeholder for if we have to use these threads, that they're ready to go. So um, these are all good. If you're seeing that as what you're using, then, then you're good. And so over here, uh, let's see if we can get back to the code view controller. Um, so over here, we have our variable view. And these two pop up from the bottom toolbar here. Uh, when you run the app in the simulator on your device uh, from Xcode, these will automatically pop up. Um, unless I, I mentioned you can change the settings and stuff, but if it's not popping up, just do that. Uh, so here is the variable view and it's gonna come out like this. And we can click on the triangles here to expand on all different kinds of stuff like child view controllers, any, uh, the nib, you can, you can see a lot of things here. This will solve a lot of your problems that are more in depth. Uh, and then you have the variable, so test string, and you can see right here it's nil. So it's like, there's, there's a problem, right? Um, and the, maybe the most useful of all is this debugger console over here, which is just clearly like unexpectedly found nil while I'm wrapping an optional value in this file, line 17. So just clear as day, there's your problem. Um, and it's the, the debugger console is what this, this area is called right here on the right, uh, the bottom right corner. And uh, it can actually take input because it's a console. So if, if this isn't solving, if you wanna look into more of the threads, like why, why did it stop on thread six? A lot of errors, um, they'll, they'll crash the app on thread zero or one because it's the most recent one. So what's going on in between those? Uh, so what's actually happening here is that um, this is, it's going through Swift to dis display this message to you properly um, to make it as clear and concise as possible. So that's what's happening in those five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, but if you want to look at it, 
just type BT right here, and the, in, in comes the whole backtrace. So um, the backtrace is the main thread, uh, and it's going to say thread number one, Q equals main thread, stop reason, fatal error, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So if you want to explain you know, more clearly, you want to look into the threads, um, this is what's going on. And you can see main at app delegate. So it's, it's obviously the app is starting right here. Um, and there's a lot more uh, console commands. Uh, I'm going to put some links below to some stuff to help me learn more about crashes. Uh, there's also the crash organizer. Uh, if you have an app on the app store and it's crashing for users, you can go in here. Where's it? Debug window, window and organizer. And this will show you uh, a bunch of crashes, you know, that your users were having if they choose to, you know, send, send the crash data to you. Uh, so that's that's very useful if you have an app on the App Store. That's a, that's a later video. Uh, but for now, I hope I hope you have a good understanding of what uh, what a crash looks like in Xcode and how to get to the bottom of it quickly. Uh, the articles below are like there's one from WWDC is a video from 2018. It's really useful, uh, more in depth on the crash organizer and uh, you know, why crashes happen. And uh, they also fix some memory, multi-threading memory bugs in there so using uh, the thread sanitizer. So if that's your problem, check that out. Uh, there is another one that I'm attaching that is a technical note from Apple talking about uh, symbolication. Uh, so basically what that is, is uh, used to, um, it would, just give you the backtrace would just give you this line right here. So the thread and the frame. And it's like, so what's going on, right? <laughs> so what it, what it does is uses uh, symbolication um, to match the thread up with the function that's being called or, you know, the whatever is being used. It's, you know, the standard library, stuff like that. So those two articles are going to be in uh, the summary down below, description, description, that's what I was looking for, uh, as well as an article I wrote on this topic if you wanna like read instead, uh, if you learn reading and writing, uh, you know, there's there's that as well. And uh, yeah, consider consider subscribing. I, I put these out uh, probably once every, every week or two. Um, so hopefully you found this useful. Let me know if you did and uh, take it easy.